like millions of other Notion users. I've also wanted an integrated calendar system for a very long time. So when Notion acquired Cron in 2022, we had very high hopes. In the middle of January in 2024, Notion renamed Cron, redesigned some of the components, Notionified it, if there's a word like that, and added some more nifty features. And it's now called Notion Calendar. It's a separate app and it's integrated with Notion with two-way syncs. And best of all, it's free. But even though it's clever, there are some not so good parts as well. And in this video, I wanted to highlight the good, the bad, and the ugly parts of Notion Calendar. Notion had two choices. Create an entire calendar app right inside of Notion, which already struggles with massive databases, with relations, or work with Cron towards enhancing the calendar app and integrate it with Notion. And I'm glad that they took the latter approach. One of the features I personally like is the ability to combine different calendars from right inside of Notion and Google Calendar. And all of that comes in together in one calendar view so that others can't double book you. That is one of the primary reasons I use Morgan to avoid double booking and Notion automations as well for a two-way Notion to Google Calendar sync. So Notion Calendar is a power user tool. And like other calendar apps, it will reflect all meeting invitations and you can attach Notion pages. And that seems to be a much better way to handle agendas and meeting notes rather than searching for it everywhere. The big new feature for Notion integration is its ability to bring in native Notion databases right into the Notion calendar. If there's a calendar and a date, you have this option to switch it on or off for different calendars so that you can see them all in one place. As examples, I use Notion databases to manage different client projects, my creative calendar, and of course a compliance calendar of all the critical dates for my company's corporate filings. I can see all of this reflected directly into the Notion calendar by linking it to my Notion workspace. It's got some clever features like this Calendly style availability sharing, meeting booking tools with Zoom or with Google Meet. You can view multiple time zones so that you don't have to ask time zone for your colleague who's right across the continent. It even has useful shortcuts that allow you to move across the calendar easily, for which I use my Stream Deck, and it simplifies the experience for me. And it has this clever status bar that gives me the upcoming meeting, and with a quick drop down, the agenda for the day and for the next few days as well. The calendar can be set from daily, weekly, monthly, or to a custom number of days, from two to 31, and it's been neatly highlighted in the small monthly calendar at the top left-hand corner. It even has a quick checklist to get you started when you first access Notion Calendar. If you've added icons to Notion, you can also import them directly into the Notion Calendar. This helps you quickly identify whether there's an event from Notion or from Google Calendar as you look through your schedule. It has these clever touches like open in Notion when you're inside of the Notion Calendar and open in Calendar when you're inside Notion. And you can navigate back and forth between both of these apps. And you know what's best of all? You can continue to manage your recurring events both as an automation inside of Notion as well as a recurring event inside of Google Calendar and have these come up from inside your Notion Calendar. I'm forced to use multiple calendar apps because of a few non-overlapping features. And it's a shame that Notion Calendar has just joined the club. Let me take an example. I use Fantastical, right? And it's great for natural language capabilities when you're jotting down a calendar event and it's UI to outline my calendar and events that are nicely stacked together on my mobile as well. Google Calendar allows me to create several sub-calendars for each email ID, thus giving me the ability to distinguish between the different events with different color codes as well. And now Notion Calendar allows me to integrate Notion into Notion Calendar, so I can't get rid of any of these three. Now, the Notion Timeline Calendar is an omission from the Notion Calendar, and it 
represents a great project management tool. And I would have loved to see a two-way sync between Notion and Notion Calendar to import multiple fields to be visible within the Notion Calendar. So Notion Calendar is currently available for Mac, Windows, and iOS. And Notion says that Android is coming a little later in the year, but it doesn't support Outlook or Apple Calendar, which also means it's leaving out a huge percentage of businesses. Most people use the phone or the iPad to capture quickly and not the desktop. But Notion Calendar is poorly executed on the phone. On the phone, you can't actually see any Notion database entries. On the iPad, you see the iPhone app that's being replicated, which doesn't make any sense. It only has a one to three day view. And the other apps have weekly, monthly and agenda views, like Morgan, for example. It also has the ability to stretch and compress times. If you want to record directly into a Notion database with a date, you need to use a different app like Instant Notion or go to Notion itself, which is cumbersome. This app can quickly add the record to the database, which then shows up in the Notion calendar. And I don't understand why Notion isn't focused more on their mobile platform. So I'm a Notion fanboy and I have integrated Notion calendar into my workflow but I'm seriously missing some of these features that I highlighted as bad and ugly. And I'd like to see those in the days to come. But as a side note, I do like the Notion calendar widget that they've created for the iPhone. And that pairs really well with my fantastical widget 